Hey everyone, this is Dimitri with Hero Canucks, and today we're taking a look at the mid tower from Deep Cool. This is the Panju V2, it is priced at $90, it comes in different colors, and I can't help but notice the physical resemblance to the Cooler Master 690 series with the curved edges, and I'm actually comparing the internal layout to be identical to the Beat Phoenix Ronin. Now for $90, this case doesn't particularly give off the quality feel, with very thin side panels and the white plastic that is rubberized, so that's nice, but there is a noticeable color difference between the steel and the plastic. Also the lack of features as we get inside doesn't exactly complement the price. The front has a removable dust filter for easy cleaning, but no fans included. Only the rear exhaust fan is included with some pretty unattractive colored cables. I uh, really wish these were sleeved or just in black. The front intake area is also very much blocked by the drive cages, and that's certainly something I'd like to see changed. Now the panel itself is also removable, and inside we find three optical slots, while the exterior design only allows for two, so that's certainly an oversight. Coming around to the top we find four USB ports, two of which are USB 3, audio jacks and PR buttons. The top features an identical filter system that is also very nice, with room for dual 120mm fans. You can also lift the entire panel, and installing the fans above the frame means having to route your cables through the opening at the front, although I would have preferred additional cutouts closer to the fans. While you can install fans above the frame, the dust filter will make contact with the blades, so intake is not an option, however, as this most likely to be used for exhaust, it will work just fine. There's nothing unusual at the back with bottom mounted power supply and 7 PCI slots. At the very bottom we find good quality, rubber coated case feed, but here is another unfitting feature for the $90 asking price. We have one of those really annoying dust filters that's actually attached with a screw. Now good thing it covers both the power supply and the optional fan mount, but we definitely need to see this change to a proper dust filter. So finally let's get inside the case and like I said the panels are really thin. Uh, and despite the fact that only the top two optical slots are usable, we still have tooless mounting for all three. The drive cages cannot accommodate for any additional fans, but we do have a bottom intake as long as your power supply doesn't exceed 180mm. The top drive cage is easily removable, although there's no way to fully secure it to the case that might be useful during shipment. Now with the cage removed, this opens up direct front intake, but also allows for extra GPU clearance. But with the cage in place, we only have 11.8 inches that is limiting, considering the most recent enthusiast GPU offerings are 12 inches plus. Also, I was surprised to find VGA clearance to be mistaken on their official spec sheet of the Panji V2 on their website, so just be aware of the real clearance. Now, I really like the drive caddies here that expand for mounting, so no need to bend the plastic. They are SSD compatible as well, and inserting a 3.5 inch drive, lock the bracket and you are ready to go. A very simple and efficient system. Now the entire drive cage assembly is removable, the bottom drive cage is screwed in, but as you can see with the top fan in place, how close it is to the optical cage. So this leaves practically no clearance for radiators at the front, which is disappointing. Coming around to the back, one thing missing are rubber grommets and for $90 again, I wish they were included, but the Panju V2 is prepared to handle a lot of cables with large cutouts and so many cable tie mounts, uh, so making sure the system is cleaned up wouldn't be a problem. And with our reference system assembled, it was a hassle free build. The lack of rubber grommets does take away from how the system should have looked, especially with the cable mess coming uh, from the power supply. Now one thing that I can't get over is the absence of front intake fans considering this is marketed as the ultimate cooling structure. There isn't that much spacing up top, just under 2 inches of clearance, so it's really good thing that you can install fans above the frame. Cable management at the back is also really straightforward and the Panju V2 will be able to handle a lot more, although the CPU cutout is quite small and it's also very common to see SSD brackets within this area which unfortunately are not present in this enclosure. Now the overall package is quite basic, the incorporation of removable drive cages with complementing caddies is welcome and working inside the Panju V2 is hassle free. However, this case is a perfect example of what not to do with new 2014 releases as there is absolutely nothing unique 
small details like rubber grommets and proper power supply dust filter is missing. We also would like full 12 inches for GPU clearance to become the standard for ATX cases without any compromises on storage. There's only one fan included and there's no window versions available which for the price I was kind of expecting. So in this state it's expensive and uncompetitive. Now I'm not out of line here, just take a look at cases within the same price bracket like the NZXT Source 530, Coolmaster N600, Beat Phoenix Ronin and some Corsair Carbide series that offer much better value with a lot more features. I definitely think we need to see less clones within the industry and more emphasis on unique features. So let us know how you feel about that in the comments below. As always, if you enjoyed this review, make sure to like and subscribe for more similar content and we'll see you in the next one.